Wow, you guys look amazing. It's so cool to be here. I did want to be down on the ground with you. I really don't like being up at this height when you're all down there. So please just know that um, I have to stand here. So my name is Alicia, as Vicky said, and I work with international clients all around the globe. I work with mindset um, and empowerment as well. So total empowerment for self. And one of my most favorite topics is self-love. So that is what we're going to be chatting about today. So who here in the room um, knows how to self-love? Please show me your hands. Okay, and can I get maybe just a few comments? What is self-love to you? <coughs> Happiness? Anyone else? Yeah. Pride in what you've done. Pride, sorry? Pride in what you've done. Yeah, one more? Yeah. Doing the things you love, awesome. And we've got one more down here. Liking yourself. Liking yourself, awesome. What I found in my journey is that so many people don't like themselves. And when we talk about self-love, it's like such a foreign concept. Did you know that in the dictionary, self-love is defined as narcissistic? Which means that you are up yourself and arrogant, just to put it mildly, uh, if you have self-love. So I'd love to share a little bit of a story with you about a friend of mine. Uh, she's actually my best friend. And when she was three years old, her mum had her up for foster care. Before that, her mum had attempted suicide before she was born. And her mum decided that she couldn't, couldn't raise her, didn't know how to raise her, so she put her up for foster care. Fortunately, fortunately, her dad found out and took her on full time in his care. That young girl grew up with a second mum who didn't connect with her, couldn't connect with her because she didn't have self-love. And her dad, when she turned 26, said to her, I'm sorry that I chose her over you. So that little girl grew up not knowing what love was, let alone what self-love was. And she always felt like she never fit in. So that best friend of mine always felt like she was uncomfortable in every space. She didn't know how to talk to people. She didn't feel like people understood her. Have you ever felt that way? Has anyone here, put your hand up, have you ever felt really uncomfortable in a conversation with somebody? Or have you ever felt like people just don't get you? Yeah? Nearly the whole room, right? Feels yucky, doesn't it? Feels yucky for me anyway. So she grew up that way her whole entire life. She got to high school, she felt like she didn't fit in. Primary school, she didn't feel like she fit in. She ended up out of school, uh, got into relationships that didn't serve her. Abusive relationships, she took a lot of drugs, uh, went, drank a lot of alcohol. At the age of 26, she decided that enough was enough. She ended up on the side of the road in tears for about an hour. She called her dad, she didn't know what else to do. And then she made a phone call that changed her life. And that was to her soon-to-be life coach of five years. Now, through the work that she did with her life coach, she was able to understand herself a little bit better. And she was able to peel back all the layers of hurt for her, all of the experiences, all the times that she felt like she wasn't loved, all the times that she felt like she wasn't good enough, all those times she looked in the mirror. Have you ever done this? Looked in the mirror and gone, you're ugly, you're fat, I don't like you. Anyone ever done that? I know it's hard to admit. Put your hands up. You give everyone else permission to do the same when you do this. It's really empowering to acknowledge these things about ourselves because we all do it. She journeyed from that time to the age of almost 38 and made it her life lesson to learn to, to, learn to love self. And that best friend is standing here on stage today, and that's me. So I've spent the last What's that, 26, 12 years diving into self-love and what that means. So what are some things that you do to love self? Can some people throw out some answers for me, please? Yeah? Oh, just like, look at what you're good at and see like, why you love, you know. I don't know how to explain it, but um, maybe if you look in the mirror and say, oh, you know, someone says, oh, I don't like how I look, but you think, oh, it's all right. Like, what do other people think? Your yeah, so. absolutely. Awesome. Yes? Perfect. I love that. Yeah. Accept yourself for who you are. Totally accept yourself for who you are. That means if you have a little bit of fat on your tummy, it's okay. If as an adult woman you have a bit of cellulite on your ass, stop looking in the mirror, excuse me for swearing, stop looking in the mirror going, oh, yeah. 
Like, get over yourself. Find something you do love about yourself because you have so many other parts on your body that are amazing. Just because one part you don't like doesn't mean that the rest of you is not attractive or is not good enough. So what's some more? Yeah. Accept your flaws. Accept your flaws. Awesome. We all have flaws, right? Yeah? Some more? Give to others without expecting anything in return. Perfect. Selfless, yeah? Something that I love to do, I was just having a chat with the most beautiful little girl at the table here, Abby. We were just chatting before about ways to make other people feel good, which also fills up your cup as well. This is one of my most favourite things to do, so um, I challenge you today, with love, to go out of here and do a random act of kindness. So my favourite random act of kindness is buy a $5 bunch of flowers from Aldi and go and do a drive and find someone that I'd like to get out of the car and give those flowers to. And all I do is just walk up to them and say, I'm doing a random, act, a random act of kindness today. I would like to give these to you. People don't know what to say to you because people aren't used to being spoiled. People aren't used to being loved. And when you do that, that fills up your love cup too. Like it's for us to be feeling good and empowered in ourselves and loved on the inside, doing things for others is also really, really beautiful. What else? I can't see it. Yeah. Perfect. Affirmations. So let's go there with affirmations. What are some affirmations you can say to yourself? I am amazing. I am amazing. Yeah, these I am statements that we did before. What else? I love you. I love you. Yeah. I don't know who just said that, but that's so great. In the mirror. I love you. Because what's not to love, right? You are one in, I don't know, something like 50 billion to make it here on the planet. You are unique, you have your own capabilities, your own abilities. You are phenomenal, you just need to peel back your own layers to see that. Yes, my darling. I am grateful, gratitude, coming from a place of gratitude. Um, does anyone here journal and do daily gratitude? Just pop your hand up. Not many people in the room. It's another activity that you can do for self-love and also for just love in general and life in general. So writing down five things in the morning when you wake up, what you are grateful for. Or these are really simple things, right? You may have heard all of this before, but it's the simple things that make the difference. Before you go to bed, five things. What am I grateful for? Put you in a good place to go to sleep and to wake up that way as well. What else? I am powerful. I am powerful. Yes, you are. Yep. I am love, beautiful. So there are so many things in the self-love space that we can actually do for ourselves. And I love how the adults and the kids are playing in this space as well. What's something else? What can you do for self-love? To pass it on to somebody else. Show the love of something you do, share the love of something you do with someone else. Yeah. Activity with someone, someone that you're passionate about, love. Perfect. Yeah, I really love that. That makes me think about the five love languages. There's the most incredible book if you haven't read it. It's called The Five Love Languages. I'll get back to you, Abby, in just a second, Ellen. It's called The Five Love Languages. And something took me a long time to learn this is that, so my partner, he is someone who likes to do acts of service. He will help me with anything. He will make me cups of tea, make me dinner, do all sorts of things for me. That doesn't fill my love cup up, though. And it took me a long time to realize that that's his love language, not mine. So my love language is quality time, and um, I can't even remember my other love language. That's so funny. There we go. There's a book. I can't even remember it. Quality time, and no, it's not my love language anymore. There we go. <laughs> you can tell this is not rehearsed, can't you? Um, yeah, and so understanding love languages. We have these things in our relationships, so relationship with people. Do you ever feel like your partner or your friend doesn't get you? Yeah? Put your hands up. And do you feel like sometimes people think, it's like, why do you not understand what I'm saying to you? Why can you not hear what I'm saying? Why can you not see what is going on for me? Nine times out of 10, you're just speaking a different language to the other person. You don't need to take that stuff personally. That's a really good book. If you haven't read it, grab that book. Can someone throw some questions? Can people throw some questions at me about self-love? I wanted to do this different today. And I did want to get down on the ground and it's thrown me off a little bit. So um, yeah, it is a bit different. But I want to make this really interactive and I want you to be a part of this. So throw some questions at me about self-love. Yeah. What makes you you? What makes me me? Yeah. So I do a lot of work on peeling back my own layers and my own stories. So we tell ourselves a lot of stories in lives. We tell ourselves, I'm not good enough. I don't deserve this. Um, I can't make money, or like adults, most adults, and they're just stories, and we live into those stories. 
So I call myself on my stories. I don't live into my stories. What makes me me? I'm super truthful, I'm super passionate. I'm really giving and loving and honest in my space. And I do everything possible for me, for myself first. That's something that's really important. I am number one in my life. Each and every single one of you deserve to be number one in your life. When you are number one, you will not be annoyed at your best friend. You will not be annoyed at your partner. You will not be annoyed at your parents. Because when you put yourself number one, and lots of people think this is really selfish, but when you put yourself number one, then you do jobs that you like. You choose people in your life that don't hurt you. You choose people in your life that light you up because you would not tolerate it if you, you would not tolerate having people in your life that don't serve you when you come from a place of putting yourself first because you are important. You are valuable. You are the most important person in your life. You spend the most time with you. Nobody else.